what's going on guys welcome back to Bulls Deep Fishing everyone is having a wonderful wonderful day it is Saturday here in Dawsonville Georgia the morning before the big SEC championship game go dogs all the way I'm hoping those dogs can can uh have some or got some tricks up their sleeves to, to come out with a big W today that would be that would be amazing where we can progress on to the final four but if not hey it is what it is there's always next year but anyways guys I want to come to you today and shoot a quick little video about kayak fishing tournaments um, everyone knows kayak fishing and the kayak fishing tournaments are on the, the, the top of the top, the, the highest or the most popular thing right now. And it's so crazy because I've been in the kayak fishing uh, for, for so long. I always thought, oh, you know, 2018, that was our best year yet. It's not going to get no bigger than that. But each year it keeps growing and growing, just like for the 2020 year. We got Bass Masters coming into the mix, wanting to get a piece of this kayak fishing life. Um, you got, you know, obviously ML, uh, FLW. Um, they had a couple tournaments for a kayak fisherman last year. Um, and then now FLW is part of MLF, so they're definitely going to get uh, get in the mix. And uh, all these big-time bass boat, you know, tournament series are getting into the kayak fishing world and it's just going to open up so many doors to people who actually want to try to do this this crazy dream of being a professional kayak fisherman those this is going to be the outlet to be able to do that to get into those bigger um outfits like bass masters and mlf and all these other all these other tournament organizations so it's going to be really really cool but today i kind of want to just tell you a little bit about how a kayak fishing tournament works um, i'm sure you've seen other videos especially from kbf about how a kayak fishing tournament work but i just want to do my little spin on it and you know my little dumb self to tell you what i know about a kayak fishing tournament um i've been kayak fishing tournament for probably on and off for about i don't know three four years i guess um probably three years if i had to put a you know, a successful number on it. Um, one year I was a somewhat of a tournament director for Georgia Kayak Fishing, so I, I know a little bit about it. Um, I always could have been a better uh, tournament director, but hey, everyone's got to at least get their feet wet and at least try it once in their life. But anyways, um, I kind of what's going to do start to finish how a kayak fishing tournament works, um, either the night before and then the morning of the tournament or the, you know, just all in all how a tournament works. So basically, um, what's different about a kayak fishing bass tournament versus a bass boat tournament? There's really not that much difference, but then again, there is a lot of difference. So just like with a bass boat tournament, you have a five fish limit. You, you know, you try to catch the biggest, fattest bass that weighs the most, and then you dump it in your live well to stay in there all day, and then turn around and, you know, take it to the boat ramp or wherever the weigh ends at, and then, you know, you get your five fish in a, in a bag and take it up and weigh them in, and then they let them go. Um, but what's different with a kayak fishing tournament is it's still a five fish limit with most tournaments. Sometimes, depending on weather and temperature and the lake you're fishing, sometimes they might drop it up to or down to three, but nine times out of ten, it's going to be a five bass limit. Um, so, um, but what's different is we don't, we don't keep our fish all day. We, we don't throw them in a live well to, you know, wait, um, for six, eight hours, however long term is and take them back to weigh them in. We do a thing called catch photo release or CPR. Um, so what catch photo release is, is basically whenever you catch your fish, um, you take a picture of it with your identifier in the picture, your tournament identifier, then you, you know, you either submit it to an app or, or hold on to it for the rest of the rest of the day till you go meet up with all the other guys to determine the winner but <clears throat> excuse me we'll get into that in a minute but first things first is obviously you got to sign up for the tournament you obviously got to find who's hosting a tournament or you know what club you you want to join to to get into a tournament and there's kayak fishing tournaments all over the nation right now so basically what my suggestion is if you don't know nothing about it reach out to someone that does that lives in your area and ask them hey when's the next tournament or what's the schedule for the tournament so that's your easiest way to get into it but how a tournament works is you know you pay your entry fee it's usually about 30 bucks for club tournaments 30 35 bucks with optional ten dollar bass um, bass side pot and then whenever you get into kbf it gets a little bit more and then when you get into big you know national tournaments it gets a little bit more a little bit more just because you know it's, it's bigger payout they pay out more spots that's typically how it works but um basically you find your tournament you pay your entry fee and then you either go to a a lot of the times a lot of kite groups or or um tournament trails or however you want to put it kbf um bass master whatever they have a captain's meeting um but a lot of times it is a virtual captain's meeting now like with KBF, you don't physically have to go either wake up a couple hours early to go to the captain's meeting before the tournament or the night before 
all the guys come together and you basically have a, a captain's meeting, basically go over the rules, um, and that's where your identifier is going to be given to you, and that we'll get to that in just one second. Um, but um, a lot of the times now, everyone is making these virtual captain's meetings, so if, you know, if there is people traveling from far, far distance to this tournament, um, they don't have to, you know, extend it an extra two hours just for a captain's meeting. They have a video that's usually up on YouTube or up on the on on the tournament organizations page where you can go watch the rules, regulations, and then at a certain time at night they'll drop the tournament identifier usually around eight, nine o'clock at night. So you have it for the next morning. Um, that's what a lot of people are going toward now, and I really like that format. But it's also cool to meet up with the guys in the morning before to have your captain's meeting to talk some trash and then get your identifiers there what you know whichever way works best but uh, that's typically how that works so um going back to the identifier that you get issued at your captain's meeting um, this is going to be your your crucial tag you must have while you're fishing your kayak tournament because whenever say all right let's let's just get into the tournament so i had my captain's meeting it's safe flight it's lines in let's let's go find them bass and hopefully slay them and get on them and catch some bass and and you know weigh them in or measure them in and submit them to get up on that leaderboard but what is crucial is after you catch your first fish what i typically do is when i catch my first bass um you know i get it to the boat and that's just you know one of the hardest parts is getting the bass to the boat, um, especially being in a kite. But once you get your fish to the, you know, back to the boat, um, it, the the fish is going haywire. Okay, I mean it's flopping all over the place because it doesn't want to come out of the water. So what I typically do is I get my lip grips um, and I basically lift the fish and it's attached to my boat. As you see, there's my little tether, and I basically lock him down and I drop him back in in the water to. Uh, let him relax and calm down before I try to get a photo of this fish on this measuring board because that's the next hardest part. So while he's in the water, I basically get out my hog trough or my fish stick. I use a fish stick, but um, what um, there's typically only three types of hog troughs. I'm using the virtual term of a hog trough because that's how it all started. Um, you basically, there's only three ones that are accepted. Either the Yak Gear Fish Stick is KBF approved or KBF accepted. Um, the traditional neon green hog trough that also comes in white, that's also accepted. That's where everyone started. And then you have the new and approved catch board. Um, that's, that's a great product as well. I like to use the fish stick because um, it is collapsible and I can fold it up under my seat and you know it keeps it out of the way for the day. But basically what I do is um, once I get my fish, I usually set my um, hog trough or fish stick in the bottom of my boat or on the deck of my boat and I all I try to keep it at a little bit of an angle because it keeps the fish up to the bump board which that's that's crucial too in just a second so once I get it all set up and I get my identifier um, on my boat as well or in the picture as well because the identifier has to be in the picture uh, of your fish so that is crucial you cannot lose this I usually take a couple extra just to be on the safe side um, because I have they've blown off and, and so on and so forth and, and some clubs will allow you to write that little code on your hand so you in case it does blow off you have something else to back up to but anyway so once I get it all set up I get my identifier uh, next to my hog trough as well um, or my fish stick or my catch board I basically go ahead and grab my fish and I go to head and set him on the fish stick or hog trough. Um, so basically how the fish needs to be sitting on the hog trough is uh, the mouth of the fish needs to be all the way up to the bump board and then it's got to be relaxed along the board and you can't pinch the tail or anything like that to try to manipulate the fish and you have to have the fish's or the fish's mouth closed um, because if it is open just a little bit it's it's a deduction on your inches. So basically once you get your fish on there um, and you get it all laid out, it's nice relaxed you have your term identifier in the picture as well. Um, you you have to you try to get the best picture possible. What I do is I use my cell phone. Some people can use a digital camera. Um, that's how you know that's kind of old school now. I guess you would say everyone's got got an iPhone or a smartphone that has a camera attached to it, and it's easier. Um, but basically, you try to get the best picture. And what I typically do is I like to take a bunch of different pictures, um, usually five to six pictures of each fish to try to make sure because the fish can move, the fish can flop, the fish can jump while you're trying to take the picture. So you want to try to get the best picture possible. So once you get your best picture possible, you basically release the fish back to its natural habitat and you don't stick it in no live well like all those other tournaments do, which is what I like best about kite fishing because we try to preserve 
the life of the fish as best as possible. But once you get that picture and you've, you've found, okay, I've got the best picture, the mouth's closed, it's relaxed as can be, my identifier's in it, my there's a portion of my kayak in it as well because that is key. Um, it has to have a portion of your kayak. That's why I put it on the deck of my boat where you can see the, you know, the de or the deck of my kayak where you can see my kayak in the picture as well because if that, if that kayak is nowhere to be found in your picture, just a little hair of it, then that picture is potentially going to get disqualified um but once i get that uh, that um that great picture everything you know all the boxes are checked um i turn around and if i'm fishing usually a kbf tournament or a tournament that allows tourney x app to be um used i will go into my tourney x app um, and basically submit my fish tourney x and what tourney x is it is a mobile app that you can have on your on your mobile device your cell phone and that is basically your leaderboard where you know where they measure the fish and so on and so forth and what what i like best about that is um when you get that perfect picture of that fish you um submit it to the tourney x app then that picture goes off to all the judges in a uh, a designated area and basically they look at your picture they blow it up they look at it make sure everything is checked off there's no manipulation of the fish whatsoever and then they accept that fish but also if there's something wrong your mouth's open or the fish isn't fully relaxed on the board they will send you a text or an email uh, immediately after they get done measuring the fish Sorry, my uh, son just decided to drive his gator out of the garage. But anyways, once um, they will send you a text or email to let you know if your fish is accepted or disqualified. If it's disqualified, uh, that means typically something's wrong with the picture or they need a better picture or something like that. I will go back to my phone, look through all the pictures I took of that same fish to see if what they ding me on, if, if that doesn't apply to that next picture, then I can resubmit that picture and it get accepted and it goes up to the leaderboard. Um, so pay, basically, um, if you're in a smaller club or a club that um, has a captain's meeting beforehand and they're not using the Tourney X app, I basically, what I do is I make a separate folder on my phone for that tournament that day and I dump all my pictures in there. Then before I meet everyone back up at the captain's meeting, they um, I will go through those, pick out my best five, then I submit it to the tournament director for that tournament, then he'll go back, judge them, and basically, you know, look at all the fish and determine who the winner is. Um, and then that's, I mean... That's how uh, it uh, almost like a kayak fishing tournament works. But once you have another good thing is once you have your five fish, um, even if they're submitted on the Tourney X app or they're in your folder on your phone, you can, and it's only nine o'clock in the morning, the tournament don't end until two or three, you can always try to cull or you know, re up your fish, which is, you know, I'm going to go try to catch a longer fish uh, and I can resubmit that Tourney X and it'll now, that I think the new Tourney X app will actually cull it for you. But basically, you determine, okay, that fish is bigger than my smallest fish, so I'm going to throw that in the trash and then put this new fish in there. Um, and then, you know, you just keep progressing on up. And typically, tournaments usually last about eight hours, so, you know, you'll be out there from, you know, 7 a.m. to, you know, 3, 4 p.m. in the afternoon, 5 p.m., whatever it is. Um, and uh, then, you know, you go back and you determine who the winner is. And if you're using the Tourney X app, they usually turn it off about an hour or two before the tournament is ended because they don't want to give away who the, who the um, winner is um, at the last minute. So basically, no matter if you're using the Tourney X app or, you know, it's just a bunch of group of guys um, fishing a tournament or a club, you will go back to a designated location. You will have a a weigh-in that's what we call it but basically they'll announce who the winners are um, show them the pictures and then also you know give out the prize money or prize gifts and then also have a raffle so it's a great great time it is so much fun and the people you meet at these kite tournaments are one in a million they will no matter if i just met the guy or guy or gal he will bend over backwards for you that's what i truly love about the the kite fishing community but all in all guys that is pretty much how a kite fishing tournament works um, it's pretty cut and dry, um, but it's very important that you read or really listen to the rules at the captain's meeting because, you know, some people, they allow you to do, some clubs will allow you to do something that the other club might not. Um, so it's very, very important that you listen to all the rules and also you do not forget your tourney identifier because that will be a ruined day if the wind comes along and blows that sucker away. So guys, thank you all so much for watching. I hope this helps you out. I hope these, this, um, really lets you know how a kite fishing tournament works and i'm sure i was talking fast or you heard a lot of background 
uh, sounds, but it's just my kids, and it's you know it's a Saturday morning at the Bowls house. But guys, if you have any questions, concerns, or if you have if I miss something, please drop a comment in the comment section below. I greatly appreciate it. And if you do have any questions and and, and you write it on the comments and I and I don't respond, go over to Bowls Eat Fishing on Instagram, Bowls Eat Fishing on Facebook, and send me a DM through there because sometimes that works a little bit better, guys. But guys, if you want to see more videos like this, please let me know, and I will shoot them for you, guys. Stay tuned, get on the water, and catch some fish, and don't forget, guys, go dogs! Stick them! Hoo, 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 hoo. Deuces.